And so that's how we should be. We should, we, everything we should do, everything we do should be viewed through the lens of God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how much better it is to, to, to look at the world and everything through God's lens? So one of my favorite activities that I like to do is to go to the gym. I, I love to exercise and, and it's very good for the body. Now, if I just read a whole bunch of books and magazines about fitness, I would not get the same benefits as I would if I'm there physically doing the exercises. I can read and read and read and gain all kinds of knowledge of how to build muscle and how to tone up and all that kind of stuff, but unless I'm actually there in the gym doing the exercises, it's, it's useless. It's not going to do anything for my body other than give me knowledge. And I think the same thing can apply to how we look at the Bible. We, it's really important to study the scriptures, yes, of course, and gain all kinds of knowledge. But unless we actually put what we've learned into practice, it's, it's kind of useless. We, you have all this knowledge in your head and it's not going anywhere. It's not being shown to anybody or spread anywhere. The Great Commission says spread the gospel everywhere you go. I mean, what? you know, I'm paraphrasing what? badly, but you know, that's basically what, what it says. Oh, and so unless we have that repetition, like unless I, you know, every time I go to the gym, if I do the same exercises, over and over, eventually I'm going to get stronger and then I can move up to the next weight. And the same can be for the Bible. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to read and read and every time you read a certain mm-hmm. verse, you're going to you're going to have a different impression of it. And I think I think a lot of that is because, you know, as we go on with life, we are in different situations and you know, and so the scriptures apply a different way. And I think that's why when you read a scripture, you know, you read it as one way, and then, you know, a few years later, you can read the same scripture and have a completely different perspective. And I think it's because times have changed. Your circumstances have changed. You've changed. You've gotten older. You know, there's so many things that change, and that's why the the Bible is just timeless. It can never, ever die, because it's just always going to apply to the world, no matter how old the world gets, no matter how knowledgeable the world gets, no matter how much AI is developed, the Bible is timeless. But repetition and pain is how we can learn. And then after we learn, we need, it's all so important to enroll the foundations of the gospel and focus on Christ. We need to focus on Christ because if we focus on anything else, we're, we're going to be like reading the Bible and doing nothing. If we just do our little, you know, reading of the day so that we can jot it off and not put it into practice, we're kind of doing ourselves a disservice. We need to focus on Christ. Christ is the, should be the center of everything that we do. Even when we go to the gym, go to work, go do whatever. Christ should always be the center. Everything that we do should center on Christ and should reflect our love of Christ. We should, we should be reflecting. We should be like big beams of, of reflection, you know, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's a good idea to really, really strive to get past the knowing stage of the Bible and launch into the doing stage of the Bible. Yeah. Jesus made an investment with us. He paid the price. Our destiny was to go to hell and you know i don't know know if necessarily burn you know because there could be a different situation if things had gone a different way but we definitely would not be able to be by christ or be in his presence because we would be full of sin and so he made this big investment for us because he did not want to see us you know living in a in a desolate land he wanted us to be in paradise with him he didn't want us to take on the burden of dying for our sins ourselves he did that for us so he made an investment in us so it seems like it would just be 
the honorable thing to do is to make an investment back with him. Now, be prepared because the, the world will categorize you as a fanatic. And, they, and that's okay because what would you rather do? Be a fanatic for the Lord or be a fanatic for something else that is not quite as meaningful? So I think being a fanatic for the world is an honor. The more they persecute you, the more you're honoring Jesus. And, you know, look what he had to go through for us. Just such pain and sorrow that he had to go through for us because he loved us that much. He went through all that pain and sorrow. And he's saving us from that pain and sorrow. We must be a radical for Christ. We must prioritize spending time with Christ. God has made an investment of us. Let's look at Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, 13 through 20. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in times of evil. Then, after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, Hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. God does not customize his armor to fit us. He desires for us to grow up into the armor. He's not going to change things just so we can fit the armor. He's going to make us fit the armor. And the, great, the greatest way to get to the point where you can fit in that armor is to pray. Prayer, prayer is what helps us fit. We should pray boldly that we can share the gospel with others. We must focus on God and the gospel message. That is our great commission. Is everything that we're doing God-centered? Jesus says, God says, point, do everything so that you point to my son and the son will point to me. We can show Jesus through us, we can reflect Jesus. I always think of the Care Bears, and it's probably a really bad way to look at it, but I've just always loved the Care Bears because they have that little symbol and the symbol glows, you know, and I just, I just think that's how we should be. Our symbol, our armor should be glowing so that we can spread the gospel to everybody. Sometimes you don't even have to say a word. Sometimes it's just how you respond to a situation. I myself have been have been under a little bit of persecution lately, just a little. I'm not even going to say that I'm suffering, but you know. And so my responses are so important. If I blow up, then I will not be a good witness for Jesus. And so that's how we should be. We should. We everything we should do. Everything we do should be viewed through the lens of God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how much better it is to 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 look at the world and everything through God's lens? Prayer will often help us discern the lies that have been fed to us. How can we save the world from hell if we're living like the world? We should not rely only on our own efforts and understanding. Fear makes us think that we have to do it and not rely on God. Can you imagine how exhausting that would be? so exhausting. I mean, we can't even do half. 
We can't even do a millimeter of things that God can do. We can only do it with His help. And we must put our faith in God 100%. 100% of the time. So in closing, I would like to read James 1.12. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God promised to those who love him. The crown of life. That's what Jesus promises. Jesus promises the crown of life, not death. Let's do whatever we can to promote the gospel. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the ability right now to be able to spread your gospel everywhere. Lord, give us the strength to keep spreading the gospel everywhere we go. Give us the strength to be good witnesses to you. Help us to do what you want us to do. Amen.